Have you Googled tips for clear skin? <laughs> I'm sure you have, because when I was trying to get clear skin, that's all I did. And as a result, I ended up ruining my skin actually, <laughs> time and time and time again, because it turned out that none of these tips were actually effective. So in today's video, I want to share with you 10 most effective tips for clear skin, according to me. And um, if you don't know, I am somebody who works with women to help them get clear skin. And I've helped hundreds of women and now thousands actually online manifest clear your skin without diets, pills, or other dumb shit. So you want to stay tuned and watch this video because tip number 10 is extremely, extremely important. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do because you don't want to miss a single video that I post. That's for sure. As I mentioned, I tried so many different ways to get clear skin, especially when I was younger. And uh, often the tips included weird things like aspirin or food on my face and just crazy things. And so along the way, I ended up actually ruining my skin multiple different times to the point where I would just like literally not leave the house because the things that I would create on my skin were that horrendous. I should probably share some of the worst stories <laughs> with you guys. If you're interested, comment down below. But I know that many of you who are searching for answers for clear skin are probably frustrated and you've tried so many things. So I wanted to create this video sharing the best, most effective tips for clear skin so that you can actually, you know, be on your way there and quickly and easily without trying all the other stuff that's out there that may not be the best for you. <laughs> so let's get into it. Tip number one. This might sound like a cliche, but cleanse and cleanse thoroughly and cleanse well, but do not over cleanse. <laughs> Seriously, cleansing is actually really important and many people, they don't choose a good cleanser and that step alone throws off their entire skincare routine. Many people either use cleansers that don't really have any cleansing agents in them, no surfactants. And so they end up kind of just moving stuff around, including their makeup, including dust, dirts, and impurities, all the stuff that you pick up throughout the day, right? So when you don't cleanse your face properly, you tend to have an accumulation of not just dead skin cells, dust, dirt, impurities, but makeup, sunscreen, etc. That then leads to clogging over time. So this can be avoided by simply cleansing with a gentle water-based cleanser in the morning and in the evening. And if you need cleansing recommendations, then this channel might as well be a cleansing channel. I have so many cleansing videos with cleanser reviews that you should check out. Number two is choose actives based on your skin's needs. Many people choose actives based on their skin type. And as I mentioned in my previous video, skin type is the least useful way in which you would choose your products. So I don't recommend choosing products based on skin type. And if you're somebody who breaks out, you might find yourself reaching for products labeled for acne prone skin, right? And that skin type. But you might also find that those products are exceptionally drying and irritating and cause you to break out even more. <laughs> That's the irony of choosing products for skin type. But many people think that their skin is acne prone when all that they have is clogging due to the skincare that they're using. And simply by eliminating those clogging ingredients, such as oils, that's a famous clogger, then people's skin just starts to get better and better and better without them needing necessarily to use so many actives. This actives part in your skin clearing journey is actually the most important and the most personal to you. This is where it differs. And so it's really important that you don't go out there copying other people's skincare routines, especially off of YouTube. Oh my God. <laughs> Seriously, don't copy other people's skincare routines or Dermatologica or et cetera, because often what is good for one person's skin is not good for you. So this is where you really need to do your research into different types of actives. And I recommend elenafilet.com and this YouTube channel for more information on that. And then choose according to what you think will suit your skin the best. And usually start with one. Start with one, maybe two actives, like one in the e morning, one in the evening, and that should be plenty in the beginning as your skin adjusts. And if you find that your skin is really resilient and can handle more actives, then you can use a few more. But with skincare, the key is less is more. <laughs> Less is more, less is more, and that's for sure. 
So what you have to do is find the minimal effective dose for whatever active that you have chosen to work with. The frequency really, really differs from person to person. And it is up to you to figure out your minimal effective dose. With actives, your skin should always, always, always be comfortable. Okay, this is really, really important information and many people get this part really, really wrong. So even if their cleanser is amazing and the rest of their routine is amazing, if they are misusing their actives, the routine falls apart. So frequency is important. Number three. Hydration. You'd think that moisturizing your skin is super, super easy, but I recommend hydrating properly like a professional and I have a full video explaining how to do that, but it requires three steps, water, humectant, and moisturizer. So often oily skin is associated with acne because you produce more oil and that oil is more likely to clog your pores or oxidize on your skin. And so often many acne prone products are not only drying and harsh, but then and many people skip moisturizing after using the harsh actives associated with acne, right? And this results in dehydrated skin. And when your skin is dehydrated, it's actually more vulnerable and it heals more slowly. So if you have a clog, that clog is gonna take forever to go away. Or if it turns into a pimple, this post acne mark will take forever to go away if your skin is dehydrated rather than super, super hydrated and, and protected with proper moisturization. It's a big mistake to skip a moisturizer on any any skin type, if you're cleansing your skin, you should be moisturizing. It's like the most basic, basic of skincare and it has to be done, okay? So don't make the mistake of skipping a moisturizer like ever if you have any kind of skin condition. Honestly, your skin will improve the more you hydrate. And many people who follow me and know the three-step moisture method, they like say, even after implementing just the three-step moisture method, they're like, oh my God, my skin has transformed. It's divine. Number four. Sunscreen is something that many people are afraid of due to crazy fear mongering on the internet, but also because sunscreen often comes in a thicker texture, people are afraid to use it because they associate it with clogging. This is true if your cleanser sucks and if you don't, you know, cleanse properly at the end of the day, then yeah, the sunscreen will accumulate and lead to clogged pores. But if you have a good cleanser, and that is step number one, so, so, so important, then you shouldn't be afraid of using sunscreen. It will rinse away with your good water-based cleanser and it will protect your skin. Many people who, you know, have a even good skincare routine, they don't get the full benefits of the full good skincare routine because their skin is assaulted by the sun, right? The UVA rays are breaking down collagen. That means your scarring isn't healing as well. It's more likely to actually result in a scar if you're not wearing sun protection. So you're doing yourself and your skin a great disservice if you are skipping sunscreen. You should be wearing minimum SPF 30, broad spectrum protection, 360, 65 days a year. And if you need more help choosing sunscreens, I have tons of those videos on here. <laughs> so watch my sunscreen reviews and watch my sunscreen Q&A video for more information on how to choose a good sunscreen and how to wear it properly because how you wear your sunscreen is also important. You need to be covering your face thoroughly and wearing enough of it and make sure to get your ears and your neck if you really don't want to prematurely age. So again, sunscreen will boost your healing. Red marks will fade more quickly. You won't develop hyperpigmentation. Like like it's just so, so, so important that you wear sunscreen consistently and you will thank me. Okay, you will thank me. <laughs> Number five. Be consistent. So many people, they start a new skincare routine and they give up quick. Like I've seen a person give up after a week of using amazing skincare and freak out and be like, oh my God, I'm breaking out. And it's like, no, you're purging. That's another thing that can happen, right? When you've spent some time inflaming your skin with improper skincare, which often will result in something like acne and or rosacea, it will also take time for your skin to basically calm down and stop reacting so um, aggressively towards the skincare that you're using. Though it takes time for your skin to heal, you can't give up, especially when you're using well-formulated stuff. It takes like eight to 12 weeks for your skin to heal. That's about one to two skin cycles. So if you started using the good skincare yesterday, you might still be breaking out for a good two months. <laughs> In fact, six months of consistently good skincare, your skin gets even better. Like it just continues to gradually, gradually 
gradually increase. Conversely, if you're using terrible products, you won't know if you only use them for like three days. I've seen people bounce around from product to product and not, you know, allowing anything to work, but also not gathering any data whatsoever. So they'll say, oh, that clogged my pores, but you don't even know because it takes like up to eight weeks for that clog to turn into a pimple, right? They don't start out big and deep like that. It takes consistency in either direction, whether in a way that serves you or in a way that doesn't, to create whatever the result. Number six, strike a balance. Many of us, we tend to overdo it or underdo it with certain products. Some of us, we underdo it with cleansing or we overdo it with cleansing. We underdo it with some actives, we overdo it with others. We underdo it with hydration, we overdo it with hydration, right? With maybe really thick products that end up clogging your pores. So striking a balance is really, really important and listening to your skin is the way to do it. So if you find that your skin is getting a little too oily, that will be a sign that you're overusing certain actives and you may be drying out your skin more than you intended to. Just as if your skin is getting flaky, it's the same thing. You might be overusing a certain active resulting in the flakes. If your skin is getting red or tight or maybe hot, again, a certain active may be either overused or it simply may not uh, suit your skin. Especially if you apply something and you feel it burning or, or cooling or stuff like that, that's a sign that that product probably doesn't belong on your skin, right? So it's really important to strike that balance with the products that you're using so that your skin really comes out happy, plump, and clear. But this also means eliminating any kind of irritants in your skincare routine. Things like essential oils, fragrance, menthol, um, what else? Oils. Eliminate the baddies so that your skin can be extremely, extremely, extremely healthy and balanced as a result. Number seven. Treat your skin like a delicate flower petal that you worship, okay? Seriously, many of us, we are very hard on our skin, and I mean physically. Many of us, we rub, and we tug, and we scratch, and we pick, and we pop, and we prod. Anyway, it's not a fun thing for your skin. I'm serious, though. I'm, I'm serious. Get your hands off your skin. If you have a skin condition, like acne, right, and you've had it for some time, you touching the acne will not help in any way, shape, or form. You're likely just inflaming the area further and or spreading bacteria or popping things, again, spreading bacteria and then creating more scarring. So in any case, touching your skin has to be like you're touching a delicate flower petal. And with that energy of love, trust me, this is going to be so amazing. Once you stop picking at your skin, you will see a huge improvement in your skin. Because often like a pimple isn't even that bad until we pop it. Once we pop it, we can see it from far away and it gets to drive us crazy. And it's much harder to cover up as well, right? So it's really important that you make it a rule for yourself that you only touch your skin when there is a purpose behind. For example, you're washing your face, you're applying your skincare, you're applying your makeup, maybe you're blotting throughout the day with like a piece of tissue, but that's it. That's where it ends. Nothing more than that. Your skin doesn't require you to touch it every five minutes. You don't have to fear that it's not healing if you don't touch it, right? Many of us, we touch it to see, oh, is there anything new there? You don't wanna know. Instead, what I implore you to do is to envision it healing and or focus your attention elsewhere. Number eight. Tell a new story about your skin. Many of us, we listen to what is being said on the internet about skin and about acne and about how it all works. But if you notice, a lot of the stories are disempowering. They end up making you fear your own skin, your own body. It makes you doubt your own healing abilities. And many people tell stories like, oh, I have chronic acne or I have really severe acne. Oh, I've had acne forever and it's a genetic thing and I'll have it forever and clear skin is simply not for me, I'll never have it, blah, blah, blah. Those stories, they do not help you. The body is extremely, extremely intelligent. Like you don't have to think about your heart beating. You don't have to think about your hair growing. You don't even have to think about your breath. You will take that breath automatically. And it's the same with your skin healing. Your skin wants to heal. This is really important. Your skin wants to heal. It's just 
It can't given certain circumstances, certain conditions, right? Maybe certain irritants or clogging ingredients are stopping your skin from being able to heal properly, right? And so when you tell yourself that you never heal and like scars last forever and all this stuff, your body's listening and that's how it behaves as a result. So conversely, I invite you to tell a story of instead of I'm an acne sufferer and I have acne, I would simply say I've been using a really poorly formulated products for a while and I've irritated my skin and now I am working on using really gentle products. Different story, I have acne versus I have clogging products. So that it's not you having acne, it's you having products that you change and as a result of the new products you can have nice skin. It's simply that easy. One little simple trick is taking a step away from the acne just in terms of language and how you describe your experience our brain holds on to things that we put after the word my. So when we use the word acne after my, our brain accepts that as something you want to possess and has a harder time letting go of the acne. So we have to be really mindful of the language we use to describe our experience so that we can have a really beautiful outcome more quickly. Number nine. How you feel is how you heal. And I mentioned this in the previous videos, but this is so important. Like seriously, this is so important. Many of us, we feel terrible in our bodies and that could be a, a result of not sleeping enough, not eating enough whole foods, you know, maybe eating too much processed food. Even people who take amazing care of themselves physically, when they effort outwardly in what seems like a positive way for their bodies, there's a key bit here that many people don't consider and that is your perception how you see the world, how you experience the world is a result of how you see things. And this is a choice. So many of us, we may not be aware of how we're maybe really self-critical or really judgmental even towards other people or we blame and we shame and we don't take responsibility, right? And we maybe have a kind of victim mentality around our lives or certain, you know, experiences, etc. These are ways in which we feel bad. And it's interesting because all that it really takes for us to feel bad is one rogue thought. And once we feel bad, that usually makes us stressed. And when we're stressed, that will literally shut off healing. And so many of us, we find ourselves stressed without realizing what that will do to certain mechanisms in the body, such as, as simply as clearing a clog. When you're feeling amazing, a clog will come and go. But when you're feeling stressed, the clog will stay around for way longer than it needs to. I have had clients that heal in two weeks, but they were really exceptional in how good they felt. Like they were super in alignment with their, you know, inner selves. They were doing stuff because they wanted to, not because they had to. You know, they really created lives that they enjoyed and they also had purpose outside of their skin. They had no time to worry about their skin. And so I find that people who obsess over their skin and they're just uh, like looking at it, like heal, 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 that usually takes forever <laughs> because you're stressed as you're obsessed with your skin, right? Like you're like, why isn't it happening yet? Maybe there's something that's not working. Oh, maybe I'm the only person in the world that can get clear skin and clear skin's unavailable to me. Ah! It's very, very important for you to prioritize feeling good. Find hobbies, find something to do that you love and that is fun and do more of that. Read books, hang out with friends, dance, sing, draw, anything. Do something else, but do not, do not focus on your skin if you can't focus on your skin while feeling good. Because when you feel good, you heal quickly, like really quickly. Finally, <laughs> this is probably my favorite because this is so important and I've seen people with just absolutely perfect skin create a disaster on their faces simply by not following this one important rule. So rule number 10 is keep a sink's distance from the mirror at all times. So what I mean by sink's distance is simply, you know when you're in the bathroom, you're doing your skincare routine and then you feel the urge to lean over and inspect like this close to the mirror. 
that. That is what I mean. Don't do that. That is a recipe for disaster. In fact, if you have a magnifying mirror in your home, don't even donate it to somebody you dislike. Simply dispose of it, put it away in your basement, in a closet, make sure that you no longer see it because it is the least helpful thing ever. Moreover, it skews your perception of you because you looking at your skin like this is not normal. Nobody looks at your skin like this. But even like if it's your partner looking at your skin like this, they don't look at it from the same perspective as you do, picking you apart. In fact, men, they're not taught to pick themselves apart the way we're taught. They really view things differently. When your uh, partner compliments you, take it, accept it, say thank you, because they don't see what we see, okay? They really don't. We tend to pick on something small and make it really big, and that is the case of like pores. I see so many of my clients in their emails telling me, I have blackheads. I don't know what to do about my blackheads. And I'm like, do you mean pores? Like after, upon speaking to them, I'm like, you don't have blackheads, you have pores. And guess what? All humans have pores, right? Looking at yourself up close will give you is a perception that there is something wrong with you when there really isn't, you're normal. <laughs> Sinks distance is your way to make sure that you will succeed in having clear skin and maintaining clear skin consistently because it's every time that we lean over that sink that we cause trouble. So I really hope that this video will help you get started and help you realize that clear skin is not this complicated mess as the internet will have you believe it is, okay? It's really, really simple. You just have to be consistent, well-formulated skincare, sinks distance. And when you do these 10 things, you will find your skin will improve. Only give it a little bit of time and patience and love. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a big old thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. They tend to drop every Sunday at around 3 p.m. Paris time. And if you hit the little notification bell, which I think you should, you'll be notified when the video does drop so you can watch it like first. And then like, like it and comment below, right? Because I love when you guys do that. And I also love it when you guys share these videos with your friends. I really appreciate it when you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then if you are looking for more skin tips, I am very active on Instagram in the stories and I even do lives during the week at 3 p.m. Paris time. So you can join me live and it's a really, really fun time. So you should follow me on Instagram as well. And also on Instagram, you get to see me without makeup almost pretty much daily. If I remember first thing in the morning, I'm on Instagram and you see me without makeup. So there, you get to see what real skin looks like, what real healthy skin looks like. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Yeah.